The following is meant for entertainment and educational purposes. It is not meant to establish a doctor-patient relationship. Please consult your mental health provider for your mental health needs. Hello, welcome to Shay Arik, my home, where we talk about psychiatry and religion with a focus on how to apply to your life. Today, we'll be talking about William James's varieties of religious experience, and this is part two uh, on lecture one. I think it's uh, religion and neurology. And this is where James continues uh, his discussion. Last time we talked about two separate questions of religion that he kind of separates out. The first one is what is the religious tendencies or what are its origins and, and things like that. And the second one is what is the significance of the religious things that we're looking at. And he says that these are two distinct and different questions and we shouldn't mush them together. That one doesn't answer more than the other one. And he actually goes into detail here. He kind of points out that religious life tends to make people fairly eccentric and exceptional. For example, the rituals people do, let's say uh, back in biblical times, the Jews were the ones that didn't eat some things but ate other things, right? And, and then they had, they had all these rituals and things and they were considered a little bit odd. And even these days, right, we'll have uh, nuns going to convents or we'll have people going to the, in the mountaintops and into silence. Uh, to live in silence for multiple years. And people who do religious practices in a very strict way, they are often seen as eccentric and odd uh, and different. He kind of talks about that the origins of our current practices starts from these great religious people, these what he would call religious geniuses, geniuses, right? Uh, because they are the ones who are very close to what it means to have a religious experience, to be religious, to practice religion. But that when we follow them, what we're really doing is that we're just practicing it from generation to generation. It becomes a tradition. It's passed down. It, it's a habit. And all of a sudden it loses its original meaning. And he makes this point not to condemn the tradition or anything, but to say that if we're truly going to understand the religious experience, then we really need to look to religious geniuses, not the traditions that we have. And why is that? Because we really want to understand the religious experience from its source, not the one that's passed down from tradition to habit. So we want to investigate the thoughts and the opinions of these religious geniuses, not someone who's merely following without any thought or consideration just to follow because they want to follow. Now, some of these geniuses, he says, have been known to show symptoms of mental health disorders. Uh, often at times, it leads to uh, a lot of internal conflict and sadness during their lifetime. And they can often be uh, seen to have obsessive and fixed ideas, fall into trances, hear voices, see visions, a lot of things that people would consider pathological. However, these features also happen to give them religious authority to some extent. Uh, he gives the example of George Fox, who founded the Quaker religion. He goes into this gigantic uh, uh, segment of what George Fox was talking about and was very, very clear that it seemed very pathological at first impulse and then put him into a particular bucket, right? And when we find a problem, right, when we find a situation, that seems pathological, the very first thing we want to do is to find a cause, right? And we try to find a cause, and we often try to find a biological one. And this is where William James goes into what we call medical materialism, which suggests that religious experiences can be explained medically or biologically. For example, uh, St. Paul's visions were caused by epilepsy, or if you saw my Joan of Arc series, Joan of Arc's could have, uh, you know, visions could have been caused by epilepsy. And that's the true origin of these religious experiences of seeing saints or seeing visions about God. Now, he acknowledges that it could very well have been caused by epilepsy, but he challenges that even if these experiences can be explained medically, the problem is when people then conclude that it is worthless. And I think that's the kind of the, the the, the connection he's saying that is a very unfair connection. So think about it for a moment. What if we could identify that your belief in God came from a chemical process in your brain? What would you say? 
I think a lot of people would be very offended by it. I think a lot of people would say, oh, that's not okay. It's really, it's a really weird thing to say just a chemical. That if I inject you with a chemical, then you would then believe in God. And if I inject you with another chemical, you would then not believe in God. I think that that is what medical materialism seems to suggest, that all of the beliefs, all the experience that we have come from a biological source. But what William James would suggest is that just because it comes from a biological source doesn't mean that it is worthless. That's the leap in logic that he doesn't like because he kind of separated the two questions out in the last lecture, last part of the lecture, of lecture one, last part of what I'm doing. He separated the two questions out to be the difference between the religious tendencies or its origins, right, versus the religious significance. And even if, he says, even if there's a biological source for your belief, even if you got the vision from an epileptic episode, it doesn't mean that it's worthless. We have to look at the significance to the of the experience to truly understand what it means and that's what requires a spiritual discernment of some sort a spiritual judgment of some sort and it would be illogical and arbitrary to only look for biological medical causes for what we deem to be pathology and not look for it in terms of healthiness and, and other things uh, like that so therefore he says we should really focus on the significance of these experiences, not so much its origin. So what are your thoughts? Do you believe that all religious experiences come from a biological source? If so, do you believe that if you change the way, uh, if, would it change the way you view religion, that if it's from a biological source, therefore it isn't real? Or does it change your you know, belief or disbelief in God? You know, if you were to understand that there's a biological source for religion. Where does the origins of religion being from a biological source, where does that fit in your view of the world? All right, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Hope you're enjoying the series. Do like and subscribe. Bye. Hey, I just wanted to give you a small update on the book that I'm writing. I'm going to be changing the title to Welcome to Shea Arik. Psychiatry and Religion to Improve Your Life. It seems to be more fitting. The other one was a little bit of a mouthful. I'm still working on the first revision, so in time, hopefully I'll get it done. Hopefully I'll get it done. Wish me luck. Keep you updated. Thanks. Bye.